Hi, and welcome to another episode of Tom Ray's Art Podcast. I'm Tom. So over the past few years that I've been doing this show, there have been a few instances where I actually got to meet some people that I've only known online, that I've known forever, that I've never actually spoken to. I don't know if any of you have ever had friends like when you first started on the internet that you met on Twitter or that you met on Facebook or you started following their blog and joined their email list but somehow started talking to them but only ever online. There are a few people so far that I've got the chance to interview over the past couple of years on this podcast. And today is another one of those moments. And this one actually goes really far back. Actually, I think a lot of them were around the same time period. It was like the mid 2000s. But the person I meet today, he had a blog that I followed. It was during, yeah, like I said, the mid 2000s. And he's a cartoonist and I followed his blog and I was following all these other cartoonists. There were online web cartoons and stuff like that back then. But I followed his and I, then I followed him on Twitter and then we've just, and we would sometimes come on, comment on each other's stuff or, you know, he would comment on my stuff. And more and more, he was doing these things where I was like, wait, this person, like he got jobs with Ralph Bakshi. He worked with Frederator. He's worked with other cartoonists and done stuff. And we've always just connected online. And then finally, I was like, why haven't I asked him to be on the show yet? So I'm talking to this person today. Plus, he has another uh, thing that he's doing that is designing things for a Netflix show called Nailed It. And we talk about that a little bit. He's working on a new comic that he wants to put out called uh, Tuna Tulip. And it's going to be in the realm of like those old Harvey, like Richie Rich comic books. We have a lot of the same interests. Let's put it that way. It's kind of fun talking to him. And it was great to finally meet him. Uh, and speak back and forth with them rather than just exchanging messages online like we have been. And also before uh, I go, I am going to take a few weeks off from the show because uh, we're going to, uh, I'm going to take a short break from the show because I'm going to be setting up a couple more interviews. So if you want to be on the show, if you have a project you're working on, or if you're an artist or you would just like to tell me about what you do, or you want to promote something, go to my Facebook page and there is a button at the top that says book now. You can actually book an episode. We can record, like just do it. There's no, like I don't screen people, just go sign up. So go to my Facebook page and uh, the interview times are gonna be 2 p.m. on Sunday, Tuesday, and Thursday. So if you are free during those times, if you have something you wanna talk about, seriously, go there, sign up, you're in. That's all it takes. I will. I love meeting people. And if you have something to talk about, let's talk about it. So go to the Facebook page, sign up, or visit TomRay'sWebsite.com and you can send me a message there. Like I said, it's gonna be a couple of weeks, but we'll be back right after that with some new episodes. I'm still gonna be doing stuff on my YouTube channel. So follow me on YouTube for just, I wanna start doing like just kind of the things that I'm making, the things. Talking to these last two people have made me really wanna get back into animation and comics again. So. I'm kind of thinking of projects of doing that. I'd like to kind of just say, here's how I'm doing things. I've got a new book that's out right now. It's a collection of the past year from my web comic and that's available on Amazon. I think there's a link on the website. If there's not, I should put it there. But you can go to tomreyswebsite.com and check that out. Anyway, sorry, taking a couple of weeks off. Here's my interview with Joe Janofsky on this episode of the podcast. <laughs> Joe Janowski, and I am a freelance cartoonist. Where are you located right now? I am in Culver City, California, or Los Angeles. All right. Have you always been from there? Well, I I was born and raised in California. Um, I grew up in, uh, well, I was born in Tarzana, California. So, uh, and then, you know, raised all over like California, like Northridge, um, Granada Hills. And then, um, but I've lived in other places. Um, Santa Barbara, when I went to Cal Arts for, uh, like in Valencia, um, for a time I was like working in New York, which I think is when we, when we first got to, you know, know of one another, I think, mm -hmm. um, Las Vegas, I lived in Chicago for a little bit. 
um, all over, you know, Vagabond, Fobo. Okay. <laughs> and, well, and this is the weird story too, because we kind of know each other, but we're like one of those people who only know each other online. Like we've, we've mm-hmm. just kind of, and so I fi- finally, when I, when I set up this interview with you, cause I've always loved your stuff and I've always just been like amazed at, you know, finding out the stuff that you've been doing. But mm-hmm. I think, and it has to do with a post that you just did the other day. Um, it, um, yeah, it, it's so basically I think we met during the heyday of like Twitter started everybody like cartoonists mm-hmm. everywhere had blog spot blogs. And I think yeah, I yeah. follow, I think I found you while I was following other cartoonists and you had a blog that was called, uh, all my heroes have day jobs. That is correct. <laughs> and I think I followed you from that and just we, and that was back in Twitter where like every, whenever someone follow you, followed you, mm-hmm. you'd be like, Hey, how you doing? I'm doing great. You know, when people would actually talk on there instead of just like posting things and then all of a sudden everybody hates everything. Um, <laughs> but, and I want to say that's how I met you. And we've just kind of known each other since then and been following each other. And occasionally, you know, we pop up in each other's feed. So then again, when yeah. I, when you posted something on Instagram, it was like, oh yeah, I, I should talk to him. <laughs> so I want to say yeah. that's how I followed you. Cool, and I've, I've been enjoying your comics, by the way. Oh, thank like, you. They're super, super fun. Um, what else? Like, yeah, I, I think like when you and I first got to know one, like one another, like during like the Blogspot Wild West days, right? Mm-hmm. Like maybe two thousand seven, two thousand eight. I think so. Yeah, oh, two thousand six. Oh. Um, but yeah, like it's so it's, to me, it was funny because you were doing like your podcast, that, like an early podcast of yours with your son, mm-hmm. right? But yeah. now he's like super, like <laughs> super old now, and I'm like, whoa! Like, yeah, we were doing whoa. a we were doing a podcast, and that was again during the Wild West days, where it was like mm-hmm. we would either um, we had we had two of them. One was we would just play whatever music, going who cares if it's copyrighted? We're just going to do it. And the other one mm-hmm. was I would find headlines and tell him about the headlines and he would pretend to be interested and want, you know, and just waiting for it to be over. And that was, it, it was kind of a funny little shtick, but it was real because I'd make him come down and I'd be like, I'm going to, this is how I'm going to teach you about the internet. And he's mm-hmm. like, I want to go play at the park. And I'm like, so yeah, no, we had a couple of, I didn't know you heard those. That's really funny. That's a huge yeah. deep dive there. I I don't even know if I have any of those anymore. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah, like uh, one of my mentors uh, in the comic book industry, this is before like, uh, before CalArts and everything. Mm-hmm. Uh, he was, um, I guess he was kind of known in the uh, black and white outlaw, I guess they call it outlaw comics um, scene. And, um, you know, it, which is like way different than like the work I do now. Right. <laughs> like his stuff was like, like stuff about serial killers and uh, you know lots of sex and violence in his in his comics and stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, and he, let's see, so he started doing I guess like a podcast like radio show, and on what I think it's on on Spotify and like they just started like taking down most of his stuff but like luckily he had it all like backed up oh really like, you know, yeah so I'm, I'm just like wow spotify's kind of being dick right now right. <laughs> i've learned since then and from stuff like that it's uh i always back up my stuff now it's having <laughs> things like that and also I don't just save it on my computer. I save it in like three different like cloud services because I can also lose my computer at any time. So I've, I've learned since then. (laughs) That recently happened to me actually. Um, Back in, yeah, I think back when I was in New York too, like I won a a really nice like Alienware PC laptop computer. Oh really? Um, It was like top of the line and it was for doing like, I won it through, uh, Bad Robot, J.J. Abrams' uh, company. Okay. Um, and that was like when he was producing, I think, Cloverfield back then. Wait, you won and it so from I, that? I did, yeah. It was a it was a competition. And I did like a two-minute like little animated video. Um, and I was one of the five winners who won one of those laptops. So I had it up until maybe like two years ago. So hmm. it was like it lasted for a while. And... But the thing was, I lost photos and videos mm. and uh, artwork and stuff that was on there. Like all my all my uh, iTunes, you know, music was gone. Right. Stuff that I just amassed like all that time. And he's just like, Ugh. so I've been slowly. I tried to recover it all, but 
unfortunately, like a lot of it was like lost. Yeah. But you learn. You know? Right. Yeah. And, and you always have an external drive at the very least from now on. Yeah. 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 I've got like two or three of those right now. So. There you go. <laughs> See, I mean, it was for a reason. Now, what was the animated thing that you did that, that you want a computer for? I might still have a link on my old blog spot. Okay. On my, like, and it was cool because like the, the computer was skinned on the back with uh with a brand called Slusho, which is like I guess a fictional soda pop that showed up in everything JJ Abrams did. Oh like, really? Star Trek, Star Trek, it was in Lost, it was in Cloverfield and stuff like that. Oh wow. That's funny. That's actually man, that's that's a very uh sort of in joke on the, on their part to even be able to put that on the computer. That's pretty cool. And yeah. So, so now going back to when I was talking about the blog spot thing and I want to try and remember the, the post that you had done or that reminded me of it was you were talking about um, it, it was the takedown of three icon or great. I'm going to mess up the name. I wrote it down cause I knew I was going to mess it up. The, uh, the three days, three targets thing. Oh, so yeah, what, what yeah. was that again? I, remind me what that was. That actually um, also has to do with my mentor in the comic industry. His name was uh, his name is Hart D. Fisher, and he was known as at the time in like the late to early '90s. He was known as the most dangerous man in comics. Okay, uh, quotes. Quote <laughs> and um, and like I said, like he published like all those uh, all those like books about us. You know his his bit like you know he was on Sally Jesse Raphael, um, Geraldo. Um, Jerry uh, Jerry Springer and uh, uh, Larry King, I think too, like talking about his books. Uh -huh. So he, he was a good guy to know, and like I learned a lot from him um, in terms of promotion and stuff like that. Okay. Um, but anyhow, like his, you know, his big book was uh, he did a Jeffrey Dahmer autobiography, um, oh. and this was the days like you know before you know before Google. Right. And stuff like that. So, you know, you'd have to do your research at an actual library, right? <laughs> and um, anyhow, so he he actually got sued by the victims of Jeffrey Dahmer, uh, the, the families. Really? You know, because, you know, they were mad that he was making a profit off of, you know, their pain and stuff like that. And so that kind of got him, like, notoriety. But what's ironic about that, though, is – that these same people who were suing him because of, you know, profiting off of that, they turned around and they auctioned off, like, let's say the vat, the vats that Jeffrey Dahmer would like boil them in acid and stuff. Right. They turned around that. So they made money off of that. I don't know, that, was, that was weird. Um, but anyhow, so Hart, he had, um, um, and, and I'll get you some photos too, because I got like autographs on, on all the comics that I had. Okay. And he came out with the comics called Kill Image and Kill Marvel. Yeah. And when and he was one of the first to do this. You know, nowadays like they have books like that where like Deadpool will kill the Marvel universe, right? Mm -hmm. He'll kill everybody in the universe. But like Hart, he was one of the first people to do that. Oh. Um and so in his book though, he was like an independent or the character was an independent comic book publisher. And he went and he killed, you know, because they were, uh, because these creators were taking space up on, on the comic book racks, right? Right. So they're, they're pushing out the little guys. Um, and so he killed uh, Todd McFarlane, mm -hmm. Jim Lee, and Rob Layfield. Yeah. Rob Layfield being like a creator of like Deadpool and Cable. Uh, Jim Lee was successful with X Men. And Todd McFarlane was successful with like, Spider-Man back at Marvel, but then they formed their own company called Image Comics mm -hmm. in the 90s. Um, and so that was actually the first book that I that I gotten about, you know, through Heart. And um, it was it's a hilarious book. I mean, it's violent, like hyper violent. Yeah. Um, and uh, then they had a sequel. He came out with a sequel, which is called Kill Marvel, in which the publisher guy got cosmic like crazy powers and started going after like all the like parodies of like the Marvel characters. Like, so, you know, so there's like parody of like Wolverine and you're just lampooning all of that stuff. So I actually, that was the first one that I got signed mm -hmm. and I actually got it signed by Stan Lee. 
<laughs> nice. When he was alive, right? In 19, uh, 1995 or 96, maybe. Okay. I want to say around the time he did Mallrats. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. So, like, I met him in a mall, actually, like at the mall, like in the valley here. And um, I don't know if they were promoting, because it was right after the earthquake had happened, the big 94 earthquake. Uh, I forgot what, what percentage it was, like maybe like a four point something, five something. Oh, wow. Um, and, you know, so they rebuilt the mall and Stanley was there to, you know, I think maybe also promote mall rats and and the mall. And uh, it was just funny, like, you know, like it, if you read that story, I kind of go through like meeting Stanley and then. Uh, you met the person yeah. from uh, Blair Witch Project. One of the characters was actually handing out flyers. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. that was like really that was a funny story too um but yeah so like from the stanley experience which was like 95 20 years later i get the third book signed i mean the first book signed which was a kill image one yeah and um, well but yeah yeah you're right you're right the blair witching happened in the late 90s i think because it was before i went into cal arts mm-hmm. um, but yeah like that was a funny because like back then there was no like Hollywood presence at all at at uh, at the con. Oh yeah, yeah. Back then it was like utopia. Like you could like walk around and there were actually comic books there, right? <laughs> right. Um, it's not like the bloated whale that it is now. Um, yeah, it was. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> but yeah, you know, like so so they you know this lady came up, she handed me a flyer, and I'm like, hmm missing wait a minute that's you i found you <laughs> what are... and uh, no, it was like they were doing grassroots promotion for blair witch which then became like a huge like horror film yeah i, I love that it's grassroots now well actually it would probably still be considered grassroots because everybody would be like who hands out flyers anymore <laughs> right, yeah. and even then it was like you know we're not advertising on tv or radio we're handing out flyers yeah i guess flyers will always be grassroots you know? What is it? <laughs> <laughs> and I remember too, um, around the same time period when you and I had first, uh, I love saying met each other, but, uh, you know, we've, this is the first time we've even like actually spoken face to face. Um, mm-hmm. the, uh, you also started working with Ralph Bakshi. Now, first of all, what were you doing with Ralph Bakshi? And second, how did that happen? Oh, that was a crazy, that was a crazy story. He is, yeah, Ralph is a force of nature. Mm-hmm. That man is a, is a is a whirlwind, right? He's like the Tasmanian devil of animation, right? <laughs> That's always well, been my impression of him. Yeah, yeah, he was a. That was a really crazy experience. Yeah, <laughs> um, definitely some stories to tell on that. Uh, let's see, how did it happen? We met because I, for a bit, with Fred Seibert who I was working with uh, in New York. Oh. Um, Fred Seibert was the uh, the man for, you know, cartoons yeah. in general forever. Um, he was a producer of, like, Powerpuff Girls back mm-hmm. in the day, Doctor's Lab, um, and currently, well, not currently anymore, but, like, Adventure Time from uh, one of my friends from school, uh, Penn Ward. And, um, yeah, just uh, everything. And... I was working with him uh, for Channel Frederator back then. Okay. And it was like a, like a, it was kind of like an animation festival each week that we put out. Um, I was in charge of, uh, of, um, I was in charge of community management for that and also um, production coordinator. So it was kind of like, uh, are you me. Talk- well, are you talking about the channel Frederator, like the YouTube presence that they had where they would keep releasing like, Oh wow. Okay. I didn't yeah, know that you were involved in that too. Like, early, like it was early, 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 early for them though. Like I said, yeah. 2007, 2006, um, back then, like it was just me doing like stuff with them. And now I think Fred has like, 10, 15 people doing the one job I was doing. Right. Except, you know, um, so I was like, man. <laughs> um, but no, it was a learning experience for sure. Like, Fred's amazing. Um, but anyhow, like, so I was doing, I was also in charge of, like, since I was doing community management, I was also in charge of, like, their blogs and stuff. Um, 
And so I would do blog illustrations for the company. And one of the ones that I did was a like cartoon, like here's Chuck Jones. And we released like a postcard series of these. I might have them somewhere. I'll send them to you. Okay. Um, one of them was like Hanna-Barbera, like Chuck Jones, like animation legends. Right. And another one was like Ralph Bakshi. So I still had the you know image lying around, and I wished Ralph Bakshi a happy birthday back then. Mm-hmm. Um, I forget what year that was. That was probably, oh wait, that was probably 2010, 2011, maybe. Okay. So I, you know, says happy birthday to Ralph, and then Ralph's social media team, which is just like his son and his family, um, they used the illustration as his personal like avatar. Oh. So like, you know, on Facebook at the time and um, Twitter, I think it was. And yeah, that was really cool. And one day, you know, I just got like an email from him saying, hey, you know, you seem pretty, pretty like bright and stuff. And I want to know, like, you know, what do you think about making like some shorts and stuff? And I'm like, that's cool, but you haven't done anything since Cool World, right? <laughs> At that time, was like what, like early like nineties or so. He hadn't done anything for like twenty years. That's very true. Like, <laughs> and I mean, I heard he had like a film that he wanted to do called Last Days of Coney Island. Oh, okay. And um, like he'd been working on that forever, but never came to like fruition or anything um, at the time. Um, and so. You know, he and I started working on on a little little short at the time, and it was called Trickle Trickle Dickle Down or something like that. Mm-hmm. And it was when Mitt Romney was running and everything. So even even now, like Ralph is still very like political and like you know stuff that he's doing. And um, we just repurposed some animation from uh, what what was that? Uh, Heavy traffic, I think. Okay. And that was pretty fun. That was a fun experience. I got to like do like art direction on that. Um, but yeah, every single morning at like, cause he's out in uh, Arizona, I think maybe, and he wakes up early. So like every morning at 6 a.m., ring, 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 you know, and that was my alarm clock for like a couple months. <laughs> Just wrapped up, hey, Joey, Joey, hey. <laughs> Joey, I got this idea. And it was just like, it was, you know, um, and there were times when, like, he'd get angry, you know, and, and I'm a very patient, calm person, and it takes a lot for you to to get me up to that level, right? But yeah. when I get mad, I get mad. Um, and so, I, you know, I would yell back at him. <laughs> and stuff. Um, yeah, it, it, was a, it, was, it was crazy. It was a crazy, crazy time, and I helped him. Uh, in the early beginning stages of his uh, Kickstarter for Last Days of Coney Island, I helped him in the beginning of that. Okay. But then he kind of ended up dropping me once. Uh, what actor was that? Ma- Matthew Modine, I think. Really? Um, Matthew Modine came on board with a ton of cash, and, and then they didn't need me anymore. So he's like, <laughs> bye. <laughs> right. Yeah. Well, it's it's still an interesting experience. I mean, it's one of those things like, you know, I, mm-hmm. I want to say case hurrah, but that just seems so weird to say, but it, that, that is funny that you, uh, I didn't even think about the cool word thing. And it's, it, he did so much stuff before that. And to think that he just oh, yeah. dropped off the face of the earth after cool world. I mean, rightfully so. It, it wasn't that great of a movie. It, it, yeah. It was, not, it was not that good, but it was Brad Pitt's first movie, right? Like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, actually, I don't know. It was either that or Johnny Swade was his first mm. movie. I can't remember which one. They, ooh, I'd have big, to look that big, up. Big, big door, yeah, right? that's the one where he had the big hair. I love this. <laughs> you and I get all of each other's references. That's so funny. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, yeah, like, my girlfriend, she's she's 10 years uh, younger than me, and she just like, I don't understand that reference. So, like, <laughs> so, like we kind of spend a lot of time, okay, here's what this is on YouTube, right? <laughs> right. No, I just, the other day, pulled up, and I saw that you did a drawing of this. You were doing your, your uh, COVID mm-hmm. cartooning, and uh, I just pulled up the Ralph Bakshi Mighty Mouse episode with uh, 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 Petey Pate, and you did the, oh, yeah, yeah. the you drew the scene where he like freaked out and he was kind of being consoled mm-hmm. in bed when he was finally calmed down. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's uh, I mean all the 
cartoons and you know cartoons and comics have really been a, a godsend you know in yeah. life in general but like you know especially like right now yeah when we need that that you know feeling i guess it is one of the benefits where it's like uh uh people who draw you can still just sit down and draw and it'll be like, yeah, some hour, you know, some time will go by and it's not like I got to go get some stuff and get prepared. It's like, oh, I'll just draw. <laughs> so that part is kind of fun. Um, and what, uh, Actually, I, I, I kind of use those, like most of my sketchbook pieces and stuff, I use them as warmups, I guess, because mm -hmm. the freelance I've been doing recently is like a lot of digital stuff. So I always like to kind of keep, you know, keep that, you know, the hand-drawn, hand-drawn spirit, like, going, you know? Yeah. But, but, like, what's funny, though, is that, like, like, I'll catch myself, like, you know, drawing and stuff, and then I'll try, I'll try, like, <laughs> pinching it so that I could, like, you know, it could blow up. I'm just, I've been using the iPad too much. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Or, like, when you draw a line and you're like, I could do that one better, and it's like, oh, there's no, you can't hit the back button. I gotta erase this thing. <laughs> Right. Yeah. No, that, that happens to me all the time. Oh, the zoom in thing. Definitely. That happens to me. That's really funny. Um, what, what medium, like what different types of mediums are you working in? I have seen you do hand drawn. I've seen you do big pieces and smaller pieces. Like what, when you draw, are you painting? Are you doing markers? Like what, what's your preferred method, I guess? Cause I'm sure you do them all, but what's your preferred one, I guess. I mean, like, there's nothing better than, you know, using, you know, sitting down with like all your markers around you, you know, kind of like when I was a kid, mm -hmm. you know, I just had all my markers scattered everywhere and, you know, just kind of being in the zone, yeah. I guess. I mean, but you know, like I am like, I'm in the middle of like trying to start up my own comic series, my own comic book series Oh, with a, one of my characters named Tuna Tulip her little Instagram handle is it was tuna to fan club. Okay. I've, I'd and, seen the drawings, but I didn't realize that it was a new comic series that was coming. Okay. Well, I mean, I'm, I'm hoping to do like a three issue, uh, mini series with her. Okay. Um, and they're going to be like in the vein of like old Harvey comics. Yeah. So Love that. I've been like using iPad a lot to kind of replicate, you know, the folds and stuff and like the colors, like the bende dots and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I, I wanted to look like a beat up old comic. Right. Mm -hmm. um, except like, have it be like a Harvey comic, but with like a sort of like surreal David Lynch or Tim Burton kind of like a twist. Right. To it. It's a little dark, but like cute. Yeah. <laughs> I guess it's like a lot of my artwork, right? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. It's quite cute. Like there's like, some nastiness under the surface of the cuteness, right? Sometimes it's even just the color palette that you use. It, it kind of adds mm -hmm. to it. Like there'll just be some really just not needed in like harsh fluorescence or something, or, you know, like no, no. I'm actually, I'm, I'm legally colorblind. Really? So, <laughs> and <laughs> so, I mean, like, I mean, I could see colors, but the doctor explained that it's a little, like a few notches lower than like normal. Okay. So I, that's why I like to use such bright colors so I could freaking see it. Right. Right. <laughs> it's funny. So the doctor told you the thing that like, um, what, what teenagers think of when the first time they get high, it's like, what if the color red that you see, isn't the color red that I see? <laughs> or like for me, like in my head, it's like, Whoa, like the dinosaurs are probably colors we never even knew existed. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows what colors they were? <laughs> so this comic, you're going to self-publish this comic, or how are you going to go about publishing it? Um, I'm yeah, self-publishing. Um, and once it's ready, like once I get like, you know, all the pages ready and everything, I want to run like my own Kickstarter or like Indiegogo or something like that. Okay. And you know, publish her that way. See huh. what happens. In the past, how have you put out? Have you uh, put out comic books, or like, how are you putting out movies, or you know, how do you how do you fund these things usually? Um, a lot of uh, freelance work. Um, I've done like a couple like uh, like Kickstarter type things. I mean, it wasn't Kickstarter; it was um, GoFundMe, I think. Yeah, GoFundMe. Like, I've done like a couple GoFundMe stuff to like raise a, raise money here and there. Um, but yeah, like for self-published stuff, I've just done like little, you know, when you could go to like a Kinko's or I mean, a FedEx now, right? Right. Um, when you could go to like a FedEx and, you know, I would just print about myself punk rock style. 
you know, do a lot of the folding and with their like long stapler they have there. Yeah. Nice. And, uh, just making them like mini comics. Okay. You know, I would, when I moved to New York, I had like a mini comic that I would pass out to people instead of like a business card. Like, hey, I'm Joe. You know? Oh, <laughs> neat. Here. What would be in it? Um, I'll have to. I might have some in my archives. Like, I'll I'll dig them up and you know I'll I'll scan them or take a pic of them for you. Okay. And it was just like uh, I just moved to New York. <laughs> <laughs> nice. I like that. How, and when you make them, how, do you just give them all away or do you sell them? How do you how do you do that? It was that was just like a bunch of you know giving them away. Um, you know they they come in really handy at like you know conventions and stuff. Mm-hmm. You know, giving them the people that you know. I admire or, you know, I like their art. Um, you know, just hand them out. Um, I do sell like stickers and stuff here and there. Um, but that's just like using like PayPal and Venmo. Uh, Venmo. <laughs> right. And you don't have a website or a card or anything that you use for this type of stuff. I have, I have like a business card, but I, I actually haven't, I need to print up some new business cards, but yeah, no, I mean, I'm also working on making a big boy website. Okay. At some point. Yeah, because I know yeah. you've had Tumblr for a while now. Mm-hmm. Tumblr actually, Tumblr started in in our offices in New York. Oh, you were where they started doing it. Yeah, like right, right in the epicenter. So that's back then, when it was just them, not like owned by Yahoo. I think they're owned by Yahoo now. Right. Yeah. Tumblr, like David Carp and um, and um, oh, I forgot Marco Marco Arment. I think they were the creators of Tumblr. They, I remember like, you know, in the offices of Frederator, we would just, you know, because Fred had his hand in everything, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, technology and stuff like that, not just like cartoons. And so he was always like light years beyond, you know, what people were doing. And like Tumblr just started off, it was two guys in the corner of our office. Mm-hmm. You know, there I go, hey, Joe, like, you want, you know, so I've, I've had, I think, Lumber. Lumber was my first uh, Tumblr there. Just just because it was funny, like, but now like a wood, uh, like a wood company, like tried to buy it out. But I'm like, no, that's mine. <laughs> right. I like it. You're whole, you, you're camping out on your on your yeah. domain. That's really funny. <laughs> it's, so you, how did first of all, how did you meet Frederator or uh, Fred? Fred, um, back when I was in Cal Arts, my final year, um, I was one of the only people that year to kind of to kind of cold email. And ask if I could come in because you know I knew they were pitching for uh, they were taking pitches for uh, his one of his incubator uh, um, programs. Okay. And this was I think when he was like still with Nickelodeon, but yeah. So I, I got in touch with his right hand man Eric Eric Coleman, and he was actually he was my boss. Eric was my boss when I was at uh, Channel Frederator. We just kept a friendship, you know, and then one day Fred, uh, Fred was like, you know, called me to his office and said, hey, I want to offer you, you know, a position and blah, blah, blah. And, and that's how it happened. I, was I, like, love, okay. I love it when people do the blah, blah, blah part. It's like, no, it's yeah. a huge deal. It's not just like, oh, and whatever. <laughs> <laughs> blah, blah, blah. And so from that, uh, now... And, and I want to, it's so funny how it, it can go off on tangents while we're talking here. Cause I have so many things I want to ask you. And the other thing too, is I know that we, um, we had originally talked about doing this interview a little while ago, but you were in the middle of working on something for Netflix and you were waiting till that was done. Are you able to talk about that? First of all, um, I, I don't know if they've announced anything yet. So I'm going to say, no, but I can talk to you about previous work I've done with There you Netflix. go. Let's do that. So that's the, what's the previous work that you've you've been doing? <laughs> so the previous work that I've been doing was for a show called a show called Nailed It. I don't know if you've heard of them, but it's okay. uh it's kind of like a game show where contestants will come on and let's say uh they want to make a really pretty Dracula cake or something. Mm-hmm. right like let's say halloween is the theme for that episode um and they had you know so the contestants will have to there's three contestants and they will need to like make like the dracula cupcake you know with like the the little head of dracula on like the cupcake they need to recreate that in under 40 minutes or something like that it's called nailed it because sometimes the results are hideous <laughs> right like really, really like terrible, but like in 
a hilarious way. Um, and so my job was like to do character designs and stuff for um for some of the for some of the challenges so let's say the ones that i that i can show you are um uh i did one for like a charles dickens christmas episode okay. it's on the holiday on the holiday netflix uh special and um my job was to come up with the three ghosts of christmas past so you know you have like the the grim reaper ghost of christmas future the Ghost of Christmas Present, and then I think also the Ghost of Christmas Past. Hmm. And so I created them, and they, in turn, took my designs and created them in, like, a cookie form. But, like, really, like, really, like, it, it looks just like my work, right? But just as a really yummy cookie. Huh. And so they topped on, like, really, uh, like, nice um, cupcakes. And I think one of the judges is... Uh, world-renowned like chocolatier and uh, uh chef uh, his name is Jacques Jacques Torres I think some of the like the, the results like just crack me up the tagline should definitely be it's just like my work only a really yummy cookie <laughs> I just yeah. love that line that you said <laughs> I want that on my tombstone <laughs> so it yeah so you did that and then uh like uh, I just know that you've done so much work and it's, I, I'm curious what what would you say is uh, I hate to word it like this, but what would you say is one of your, the favorite things you've done that you've worked on? And, and um, I, <laughs> which one do you think I would? Uh, no, never mind. It's that's a putting you on the spot question. It's like that belittles like any of the other ones. So that's a horrible way to ask that. What What's some of the most more notable things that you've worked on? There you go. How about that? <laughs> uh, well. well. One thing that popped in my head was recently uh, one of my other mentors and uh, legends that I worked with was Gene Deitch. I don't know if you've heard of him. Yeah. Uh, he, he recently passed away. Yeah. Uh, a few months ago. So that was, it was like losing like my animation grandfather, right? Yeah. Because <laughs> every day we, you know, he was, um, I was doing uh, social, social media and uh, community management for a company called Rembrandt Films. And Rembrandt Films was also like, you know, Gene Deitch was a part of that because um, I forgot the guy's name, Snyder. Snyder was like the last name. But this guy produced a lot of his cartoons in the 60s. Mm -hmm. So, um, and they did like uh, the Nudnik cartoons, Nudnik. Um, okay. They were like back in the days when, like in the 60s, when um cartoons before like the films were really popular um yeah. they did that's like a lot of like the stuff they did like and gene worked on like everything like from the days of like upa mm -hmm. beautiful animation for upa oh right uh, they did like gerald mcboing boing and stuff like that um so we did that he worked on tom and jerry he worked on uh popeye Crazy Cat, I think, was another one he did. He did oh, a lot cool. of, like, the storybook stuff, animated storybook stuff. Uh, so he worked with Maurice Sendak for, like, Where the Wild Things Are. Hmm. Um, and those are, like, educational stuff he did. So he did amazing stuff, so many, like, so many things. And I learned, like, so much from him. And his brain was just, like, always on, even though he was, at the time, like, 90 80 you know? really you know 85 like 90 he still was like all there and sharp as a sharp as a tack like with his humor and everything um yeah i learned i learned a lot from him and um that was a pretty a pretty nice feather feather in my cap so i was helping them help promote nudnik which was their cartoon from the 60s but uh gary gross from fantagraphics Hmm. Uh, kind of graphics uh, books. Uh, they probably check a lot of great comics and mm -hmm. graphic novels and stuff. They publish with Gene a uh, a few things, um, but like the Nudnik Reveal book, I think it just come out, and that was like behind the scenes stuff with like storyboards, character designs. Wow. Um, yeah, it was. It's a great book, and you can find it. You can find it online now for a pretty good price. Um, but I definitely recommend picking that one up or, uh, what else does he have? 
Uh, there, there's a few other good books by Gene and, you know, Gene's, I got to know Gene's sons through this. They're great guys. One of them is Kim Deitch and he's like a, was an underground, underground comics guy, like, you know, in, you know, mm. contemporaries with Crumb and stuff like that, you know, in the sixties. Right. Um, but yeah, no, it was, it was pretty neat. You know, I was really bummed out when he, when he passed. Yeah. You know, because it was, it was hard, like, organizing meetings with these people because Rembrandt Films, they were in New York. So they were in New York time. I'm in California, California mm -hmm. time. And then Gene was living in Czechos uh, the Czech Republic. He was? You know, so he was, yeah. He, he actually, he moved there in the 50s or 60s. And wow. he had been there ever since. Interesting. I didn't know so, that. Yeah, he, had a, he had a great life. Yeah, like an interesting life. Yeah, no kidding. Yeah, so he was, you know, he was doing these cartoons with, you know, people who had no idea, you know, the American animation format or anything. So he kind of had to teach them everything there. Mm -hmm. And so that's why I don't know if you've ever seen it, like the Tom and Jerry collection of his, but there's like a special um, Gene Deitch collection of Tom and Jerry films that came out in the 60s also, I think. Oh, I didn't and know And the that. animation, it's charming. Yeah. <laughs> Like they're very designy looking, which I, I appreciate, you know, but uh, yeah, so that was, that was a good feather. I kept working with him. Huh. You mentioned the book and it's got the behind the scenes stuff. I don't know why, but I love seeing the storyboards for things like that so much. And it's, it's, I mean, they're like just sketches and things, but it's the, like, I don't know why those are just so appealing when I see those, I'd like to seek those out too. A lot of the times, especially okay. I've been going down the rabbit hole of trying to find old UPN storyboards okay. and stuff because i want to know like i love the end product but i want to see the mm -hmm. process of how they got there you know it, that's the part i really like it's, i want to i want to learn from that it's like i can sit there and copy it and go you know i think this is what it looks like it's like no i want to yeah. see the whole process and the only thing i can ever find is and especially like with the story or the the background layouts and all that is just like the mr magoo ones those are all over the place i want to find more of the obscure ones but yeah, if you want a good book that I have in my collection, it's called um, Cartoon Modern. I don't know if you've oh, heard yeah. of that, but it was mm -hmm. by one of the guys who ran at the time, I think he's still there, uh, Cartoon Brew, yeah. um, Amid Amidi. And it's just this beautiful, gorgeous book of um, like layouts and sketches and stuff from like all the different companies that were doing, you know, 1950s, like 60s animation. Yeah. Oh, so, cool. so like, I definitely recommend hunting that one down too. That's a, that's a beautiful book. I'm probably going to do that now. <laughs> yeah, and definitely look for the Nudnik one too. Um, you can also, I think, through Rembrandt Films, order the Nudnik. It was called Nudnik Revealed. Okay. The uh, the book, and then Gene actually wanted uh, Gary from Fantagraphics. He wanted him to produce the. Uh, my girlfriend's helping out. <laughs> but yeah, this is the, uh, this is the Nudnik book. A oh, little yeah. Character. I recognize that now. Okay. Yeah, this is the uh, great book. I don't know if you see it. Oh, I mean, there's some more stuff. <laughs> this is the uh, Cartoon Modern book. Yep. Okay. I have seen that. All right. I, I do know where to find that. All right. Looks like it's Chronicle Books by Amid. Amid Amidi. Amid, Amid. Okay. And really nice. And then... Uh, this is another good book by Gene that I actually I got him I got him to sign it. I don't know if you can see that. Oh, there cool. Yeah. But uh, this is uh, one of his early comic strips called Terrible Thompson. All right. Yeah. You know, this came out before Tom, or I guess before Tom Terrific. Mm -hmm. This might have been like the prototype to Tom Terrific from uh, UPA. That's awesome. It's a good book. Really those are book. all, those are all the style that I love. And I know that you do too. Like you, you oh, yeah. definitely, you have the old cartoon look style. Um, I don't want to <laughs> say it. Well, no, it kind of is like the Terry Toon style, only it's kind of a underground Terry Toon style. Mm -hmm. um, how, when did you start drawing like that? Um, I don't know. It's so hard. Like you kind of like end up just amassing your influences, you know? Um, I found out uh, about like Gene Deitch and the Terry Toon stuff back when I was at school. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, I had a great character design teacher. Um, his name was Alex Kirwin. Oh, cool. He is uh, the latest thing he did was working on the new uh, Warner Brothers shorts. 
they're phenomenal. Uh, they're on HBO Max. Okay. The new Bugs Bunny cartoons. Um, beautiful stuff because it looks like the old, you know, the old um, old Bugs Bunny, like when he had like the yellow gloves and everything. Right. You know. Um, but yeah, he's doing that, and I learned so much from him. Like, so I mean, and I loved like the whole like Tom terrific look. That was like, I think big on Captain Kangaroo back in like the fifties and sixties. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and uh, but just beautiful like bold lines that they were doing. You mm-hmm. know that Gene was Gene created that one too. Um, but yeah, like when did I start? I guess maybe just learning you know and at the time then uh you know we had a really robust library there at cal arts you know so i would check out books um and just you know i mean my let's see my first year at cal arts was spent in the fine art department Mm -hmm. and so you know the work that i was doing like was too they said that my work was too marketable (laughs) and i'm like i'm like but that's a good thing. Yeah. Like, <laughs> and then, you know, so I said, fine, you guys want to know how marketable you guys want to see how marketable I'm going to be. I'm going to do at the time I was going to do a, uh, a comic book as an art piece, mm-hmm. meaning like I would draw the comic, color the comic, um, and self publish the comic. And then the whole art aspect of it too, was not only creating the comic, but taking it to conventions and stuff and seeing how people interacted with it and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, And in order to do that, I ended up, you know, okay, well, I don't know anything because it, uh, I'm not the most technical person, you know, it took me a long time to like learn Photoshop and flash and um, illustrator and, you know, even like the iPad, it took me a couple Hmm. you know, to, to wrangle it, you know, but, um, you know, so I took like a graphic design extracurricular, uh, or, uh, it was, a uh, what was it? It was an independent study class. I took a graphic design, you know, one with, one with the heads of graphic design at Cal arts. Mm-hmm. And then I was like, you know, I really need to like beef up my, my character design stuff. So I just took an independent study in Alex's, uh, character design class. And so I turned in my first assignment to Alex and, you know, which was, you know, draw three people in the same uniform or the same costume, but have them be different body shapes. So I did like, I did McDonald's employees or or like fast food employees. Okay. And um, he really liked it and said, I want you to take this to our dean. His name is Frank Terry. I'm like, oh, fuck, what did I do? (laughs) Shoot. What did I do? I didn't. Hope I'm not in trouble. And so he told me to take it to Frank, and who was the dean of the character animation department there at school. Okay. And um, and he he became a mentor to me too. Um, as well as my mentor there was a, a guy named Corny Cole, Cornelius Cole the third, and he had a hand in like a lot of the Chuck Jones like Looney Tunes stuff and stuff oh, at wow. Disney. He was an animator back in like the 40s and 50s, you know, and um. Yeah, so he took my stuff to Frank, and Frank said, this is great, you're in. And I'm like, <laughs> what? And uh, he's like, you're in, you're, you know, you're in our department. And I'm like, okay. And so I kind of I kind of defected over from, like, the fine art department. You know, I was like, fuck you guys. <laughs> um, and, um, and so, yeah, I got into the, that's how I got into, like, the character animation department at school. Nice. Yeah, and the reason I ask that too is because we all start out thinking that we're going to make great fine art, or at least the people that I knew growing up did. Like mm-hmm. in high school, it was, I was making, I, I had to try and find clever ways to make a commentary on the world mm-hmm. or whatever. And then, and this is what the ironic thing is, or not ironic, but the the, the connection to this conversation. Then I saw Ralph Bakshi's New Adventures of Mighty Mouse, and I was like, nope, that's what I want to draw. <laughs> I want my stuff to look like that. <laughs> that stuff like really like kicked off. Like even it was proto like Ren and Stimpy too, you know, mm-hmm. like I mean that yeah, John Kay was sort of like his right hand man at the time. Right. You know? Um and so which is funny because like I, I kept thinking about it, like Ralph and was like, I feel bad for John Kay. <laughs> but, I mean, not anymore. Not obviously. anymore. No, no, no. <laughs> 
no, no, not anymore. Fuck that guy. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. You said before that you're not, or that you uh, had a hard time technically or with technical things or, or programs or stuff, but yet you've mentioned several times that you've been the social presence for many different organizations. Now, how are you able to do that, but still have a hard time with the technical side? Like what, what are some of the, the social presences, presences? What are, <laughs> what are some of the jobs you've had as, as like the social presence of different companies? I'm, I'm trying to think of like my trajectory with that. I think it was just, um, I mean, when I was in school, I, I mean, I, I wasn't as rich as a lot of the kids there at school were. Um, in fact, I think one of my teachers, one of my teachers told me she thought that I was like a rich kid because I dressed in thrift store clothing. In oh. fact, like I could just afford that, <laughs> you know, <laughs> but like she thought I was rich. And then like I had one, I, I won another computer um, at the time through Mattel. I worked for Mattel uh, as an internship. Okay. And um, I I used my money that I got from the scho- from the scholarship to get to get a, a Sony, at the time a Sony Vio. It's a really nice computer. Yeah. To um I think she you know she thought I was rich because I had like that new computer and stuff and I mean growing up like I never really had access even though my dad was like a computer programmer. Um, he, he worked for, uh, for Hughes aircraft, which is a subsidiary of NASA. I never found out what he did do though. Cause he was just like, if I told you I'd have to kill you. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> no. And back then that was like 2000, early two thousands, I think. But, you know, so I knew how to email. <laughs> okay. Um, so you kept winning but computers, but yet you didn't have access to one most of your life. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, um, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, and so finally, then, like in the late or early two thousands, is when like Friendster was still a thing, right? Oh, right, yeah. Um, and there was even a, a prototype for like online dating called Makeout Club. I think that was like another, another like online. I don't online know that one. Meet, okay, you can meet like other, other hipsters and stuff like that, but, but. Uh, yeah, there was like the makeup club and then like Friendster. And so I just started getting, you know, good at using those programs. And then Blogspot came out around 2004, 2005. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I guess I've found that, you know, people were into like the stuff I would post and my writing and stuff like that. And that's actually what led Fred, you know, because I would, you know, also comment on, at the time, like their early, like Frederator blogs. Oh. Um, I comment on that too. And he really enjoyed my writing style. I guess he would read it from time to time. And he invited me to become a blogger for them. Like oh. this was before moving to New York. And so I got to interview like lots of, you know, animators and stuff, um, you know, that was a, that was fun. I just sent them a set of like questions via email and stuff like that. Yeah. And you know, I you know, so learning that program, learning like Blogspot, um, and that just kind of led to led to you know working with Fred for like the social media stuff. Um, and next you know, that company was called Next New Networks, I think, at the time. Mm-hmm. And then uh, by the time I uh, by the time I was let go they actually just got bought by YouTube. Oh, they did. Is that around the time the cartoon hangover started happening too? Uh, I think so. I think so. Actually, I did the logo for a cartoon hangover. Oh, did you? Like, okay. The melting skull, right? Yeah. That was, that was mine. And uh, it, it's nice that, the, that Fred still uses it. You know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of weird seeing it, you know, but um, yeah, like, yeah, that's about the time I think that Cartoon Hangover started. Like we we were making plans to begin like Cartoon Hangover, and then uh, Fred sort of took Frederator out of Channel Frederator out of Next New Networks. Yeah, and that's kind of that was like maybe two thousand eight, two thousand nine, I want to say. And little did I know that him taking Channel Frederator out, you know, would be like you know that's when they asked me and a couple other people that I was working with to kind of vamoose. Right. And, uh, and, um, 
yeah, then then they got bought by YouTube. So well, and that was the thing too. Is that was still there were two times where cartoons like the heyday of cartoons online were so fun and the cartoon hangovers yeah. and like there were like scheduled things where you knew you'd see some, it was like going to one of those underground cartoon film fests every yeah. other day. You know, there was the, like, there was the like ice box. <laughs> yeah. There was ice box. There was wild brain. There was mm-hmm. channel Frederator. There was all that stuff. And I'd love watching it. And then the flash cartoon boom bubble or whatever you call it hit. And they realized we're paying all this money, but nobody's making any cause they didn't know how to do that. And then finally there was YouTube and cart, you know, Mondo mini shows like actually trans transitioned over to YouTube and all that. But then much like the cartoon hangover, I remember that would be on and you're saying they YouTube bought it and pushed you guys out. But at the same time, I remember soon after that, it was like, where'd it go? And they, they just never updated and never said, sorry, we're doing this or, and then cartoon yeah. like online cartoons. Now it's just like a random thing. It's not a, scheduled thing and like it used to be it used yeah. to just be you could count on these companies putting out all these cartoons but yeah I well like i mean i, I think anymore. i think fred still fred is still doing that okay with channel and stuff like i said um but he recently sold frederator i think to a canadian company oh really um, i don't know what he's doing next but but his email does say frederator uh, fred films hmm. so Maybe, you know, I mean, he's always going to have his hand in like a bunch of pies. So I might keep me involved. <laughs> that is what you said. Yeah. I, I, I'm going to have to check that out again then. Maybe. Uh, yeah. I'll have to look. I guess I haven't really just followed them for a while. Hmm, now I got to look it up. Yeah. Well, I mean, like, you know, they're still doing stuff, but it just isn't the same. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, um, And one thing I learned, though, like watching all this is that. um. <laughs> Even if, even if your animation just, you know, kind of like Hanna Barbera, like even like more limited than Hanna Barbera stuff, like I can move this object here, like this across the screen, people are still gonna be like really into it, like yeah. now, you know what I mean? Like, like they'll be impressed by just that, and just like, <laughs> <laughs> um, I guess what I mean, like it doesn't take much for like, for people to be super impressed with you know what i mean mm-hmm. uh, something like limited i don't know what i'm trying to say but <laughs> well and do you do you still do i mean are you doing limited animation or do you do full like 24 frame animation type stuff like it's like a mixture of both i mean like i'm still i'm still using flash here and there mm-hmm um, although now Flash is basically dead, right? Right. Um, I think it became Flash became Il- Adobe Animate. Animate, anime. yes. And so, I mean, I haven't played with that yet, but one of like the things I have been doing though is with the iPad, they had now have an animation functionality with it. Oh. And so you're able to make like, you know, your animations like right there, like right on the screen. Yeah. And so I've been playing with that, um, just making like little gifs which i guess is what i'm saying like people are like super impressed with like just gifts you know nowadays right. i don't know if it's like people's attention spans kind of like you know yeah yeah you don't have to you don't have to do a three minute short anymore <laughs> yeah and like th- that kind of made me think like wow like you could just literally maybe do like micro micro episodes you know yeah. that are like small gifts or something like yeah, and maybe like, even make them like serialized. I've actually toyed around with that too. I've been using on my uh, tablet. I've been I I don't have an iPad. I have a Samsung uh, S Tab, so it has a pencil. Yeah. But it uh, I've been using Flip a Clip, which is one, and the free version comes with a watermark, and you can do like maybe, I think it's like maybe uh, forty eight frames. You know, oh, wow. so I've been doing that. I know we're saying, oh, wow, for a 48 frame <laughs> animation. <laughs> but I mean, like the point is, is that, you know, it's kind of it's kind of free right now. And like like I guess like the whole gift thing right now is like the new Wild West. But yeah, you know, just like in terms of like bite size, like not even bite size, but like maybe like crumbs that are. <laughs> yeah. Well, and even size, like, well, some of the I guess some of the real challenge is to come up with a story that can happen. It's, you know, that, ha- that happens in that short of a second span, you know, in six seconds or whatever. Yeah. I mean, and like that, I mean, it's a, 
sounds like a great challenge, like a fun challenge to me, you know, like trying to figure out how to do that. Yeah. Um, I think, I think your stuff would look really cool. Like, you know, especially since like, there's no color. Like in my head, I, I correlate your stuff with like Tom Terrific. Oh, you know? nice. Thank you. You remember how like Tom, he would like, you know, there's like a tree behind him. And as he would pass the tree, like the tree would also go through him. <laughs> oh, yeah, I love that. I can kind of see like maybe like, you know, when your character moves, you know, with with the background, like behind you, but how you draw it, you know, if he moves like behind it, you could see it kind of also behind him too. Yeah. Like, I think that will look, look really cool for your, for like, you know, when you, when you start making your shorts. Yeah, no, I like that. I, I never thought of doing it in that <laughs> style. That's really good. It, huh. Okay. No, I, I do like that style too. So you, you nailed it. Hey, we just referenced your other show. Um, <laughs> and then, um, so one other thing to ask is, uh, what would, what can people expect from you? What type of stuff do you have in the works or, um, you know, stuff that you can mention? <laughs> yeah. Um, well, soon I will, I guess I'll be letting people know like when the next thing on Netflix comes out. Um, it, it, it may, <laughs> it may be like the new, uh, like I just got that <laughs> part of that, of that nailed it kind of, kind of thing. Uh -huh. I don't know. I don't, you didn't hear that from me. Let's see what else. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm just, I'm just using this time right now. Uh, you know, once I get most of the other like stuff I've been doing, I've been doing like freelance, like logo design stuff um, for like a, a couple companies, like uh, medicinal sort of companies like oh, that. Okay. Um, what else? Uh, I've been doing a lot of um, like freelance commissions. Like, so let's say somebody likes Tank Girl or something. So I'll draw my version of Tank Girl for them or you know, other comics, you know, they'll commission me for like presents for, you know, their, their girlfriend or boyfriend. So I've, I've been doing that um, here and there, but my, one of my main things though, is that I want to get done at least during this time that we have right now with COVID is, is get the Tuna Tula fan club yeah. comic going. And um, will it be good? I hope so. <laughs> when do you think you'll, uh, or not, not when do you think, but like, what's your, what's your plan for a release date on that? I know it's not realistic, but in your head, you gotta be going, I want to get it done by this time. Hopefully. Right. Well, each page, I mean, each comic is going to be 24 pages. Okay. You know, like standard, standard comic size. Um, but yeah, I mean like that, I've been slowly like writing like the stories and stuff. Like I have, um, I have like a whole sketchbook, mm -hmm. you know, filled with. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> is that backwards on your end, or no, no, not on my end. I'm seeing it right. Okay. So, like, you know, I've just been like, I have like a whole sketchbook full of like, yeah, I don't know, just uh, here's, I don't know if you've seen this oh, one. Wow. Just like a whole bunch of, whole bunch of tuna here. <laughs> I love it. Um, and just coming up with like ideas in here. Um, I don't know. If she has she has stickers. Uh -huh. that, you know, people can, yeah. <laughs> I also, uh, I might be putting this guy, this little dude. Yeah, I've been seeing that. What's what's the deal with that one? That, um, I basically figured out uh, that all my bad ideas, like all my bad characters and stuff, um, can live within the Tuna Tulip Tunaverse. Right? Yeah. Right? Um, and so that's why it's called Tuna Tulip Fan Club, so... You know, not only are you in the fan club, but also it's like, you know, her friends are in the fan club too. So it's like Porter Duck can be part of it. You know, Thompson is another one of my characters can be part of it. He's a dog. Um, yeah, and it's just an excuse for me to, to take most of my ideas and put them in there. The idea with the with the comic series, though, it's going to be three issues. Um, and Tuna Tulip is like one of the richest little girls in the world. Oh, kind of okay. like Richie Rich or uh, or Little Orphan Annie, um, and you know her dad's like a multi-billionaire, but he's not really all there. And I wonder, do I have a drawing? Oh, that's the more of the expansion on the Harvey Toons thing. Like it's a Richie Rich yeah. character. Okay. Yeah. So her dad is uh, this guy here. <laughs> you see 
Nice. But uh, his name is a uh, warship, warship uh, tulip, and he's one of the richest multi-billionaires. So he gets her whatever she wants, and um, this is going to be what I've been calling like the mansion trilogy. Hmm. And uh, so each one will be, the, you know, uh, what is it? Um, water, air, and land. So let's say the the air one is going to take place in space. So she'll have a space mansion, you know, like uh, like on a satellite or something. Um, the water one will take place under the sea. So the mansion will be like a whale or something. I don't know. I've been just coming off of it like right. the top of my head. But, uh, and then like the third one will be land. And I'm figuring that one I could lampoon like a lot of like fairy tale, fairy tale stuff, you know. Um, and I've got like other ideas that will fit in with each, each thing. So like, for instance, like the fairy tale land will also have a uh, kind of a thing I've been toying with for a while called Lawn Quest. I don't know if you've seen any of those drawings or not. I don't know. But Long Quest is uh, is is going to be like like Lord of the Rings, but but set in suburbia. Okay. Yeah. So it's like a little lawn gnome, a little lawn gnome named uh, Normie. Oh yeah, yeah. All right. And uh, and uh, his friend, uh, like a sunflower, magical sunflower, um, a little frog mermaid. <laughs> He's part of it too. And who else? Like, there's a talking dog and a, actually like a talking little piece of poop. <laughs> of course, as there always is. <laughs> yeah. Uh, his name is Nathaniel. <laughs> okay. Or um, but yeah, I'm, I'm thinking like that, you know, I could have a few pages of that happen in, in the tuna, in the tuna comics, you know, kind of like how you find like, you know, in like the Richie Rich book, there could also be like a baby Huey storyline. Yeah, or, something. or there'll be so, like a, a, a little devil or what? No, hot stuff. Yeah, like a hot one stuff. or two page. Yeah, yeah, nice. I've been I've been, I've been collecting a lot of those recently. So have I. And, um, <laughs> yeah, I actually I run a I run a, a comic Instagram with my brother. Oh. Um, and like we share like we share our comic like since that we've had since we were kids. So if you want to take a look at that, it's off. The Wall Comics. Okay. So you should definitely check it out. Like I we will. we just like we take pictures of like books in our collection and stuff. And I've been hunting down a lot of like the old Harvey stuff or like the old uh, Dell or Gold Key mm-hmm. stuff. And to me, like the condition doesn't matter. In fact, if it's more roughed up, the better, because then that gives me ideas for like, okay, I could scan that part in and like digitally put in like these wrinkles and stuff like that. And, right. You know. I was thinking maybe like hand embellishing them with like, you know, cuts and stuff. And I don't know. We'll see what happens, but I'm, I'm super excited for it. And it's a way to, to just showcase not just tuna, but like, you know, a lot of the other ideas that I've had and, you know, you never know. Yeah. And where can people, if people want to check out some of your work and also keep an eye out for this, where Mm -hmm. should people follow you? I'm hoping to get like a big boy website up soon. I have a friend who's a uh, high school friend who's going to be helping me make that. Um, but for now, I guess I am on Instagram at Joe J. I'm on Twitter at Joe J. <laughs> and I think I'm also on Facebook at Joe J. Yes. So I, I kind of feed my, feed my Instagram feed into my, into my like Facebook feed. Okay. For like stuff. But yeah, that's, Simple. And it's that's it. Joe, J-E-A-U-X. J-E-A-U-X-J. Yeah. Okay, great. I just want to make sure that if people were just listening to it, that they didn't think it was just J-O-E. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I do love Not the way that. you spell your name, though. I think I, I love the fact that it's spelled that way. And every time I see it, it's like, it makes so much sense. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's funny, like when I first got, uh, because I, I also worked for, uh, for Disney, uh, their video game division. Oh yeah. Back then, uh, it was um, they were known as Buena Vista Games at the time, but now they're just Disney Interactive. Um, and we, like my team, we were the tail end of the people who brought um, Epic Mickey, Epic Mickey to to fruition, I guess. Oh. Um, and that was a video game that came out for the Wii back then, in which you like you wield like a like a pen, like an ink pen. And you're able to like draw and stuff. Um, 
and our team was able to bring back uh, Oswald, the Lucky Rabbit. Oh, okay. Uh, back to Disney. So that was that was 2006, I think. And um, <laughs> we traded two live action sportscasters uh, from ABC to go over to Universal, and Universal then traded Oswald, the Lucky Rabbit, back to Disney. Huh. So after like 80 some years, right? Like uh, Oswald was Walt Disney's first creation before Mickey. Right. And so he lost him like because uh, Universal, I think back then they, they basically like ripped him off, stole him from him and like fired him. Hmm. And he's like, never again. That's never again going to happen to me. That's when he came up with the mouse. Yeah. I forget. I forget his name. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Well, Mackie, Mackie, <laughs> uh, Ma- Ma- Macklemore Mouse, I think. Um, Mumford. <laughs> <laughs> well, I want to thank you so much for talking with me today. I'm so glad that <laughs> we finally got the chance to meet. Yeah, yeah, super awesome, man. 